I'm Diane Ravitch. Uh, I'm research professor of education at New York University. As, as I know very well as a historian, the arts have always been under pressure uh, because they, they're, they're not at the top of most people's agenda, oddly enough, uh, because if you raise the question with parents about whether the art should be cut, there's usually an enormous uh, outpouring of, of outrage. People don't want the arts to be eliminated. Uh, but the, under today's high-stakes testing environment, uh, uh, an environment created, first of all, by No Child Left Behind, and now amplified by the race of the top. The arts really don't count. The arts don't matter. They're unimportant. So when a school has to make a decision uh, about whether to spend money on test prep materials uh, or to let go an arts teacher, very often the arts teacher has to be sacrificed to make more time and more resources available for testing because uh, the school's surv very survival uh, is now tied to the test scores. And the test scores don't reflect uh, whether kids were engaging in the arts. They simply reflect how much time they spent learning basic skills and learning how to take tests. So it's, this is really today, uh, in my view, a very toxic environment for the arts uh, because there is a lot of official pressure uh, that excludes them and, and diminishes their importance. I think the arts are terribly important for all children. And I think that uh, what is particularly tragic today is that in, in schools that are attended mostly by kids who are poor and mostly by children who are African American or Latino, uh, that the arts are, are minimized because the pressure on these schools is inordinate to raise test scores. Uh, so these will be the schools that might be most at risk for not having the arts. So arts educators could well argue uh, that the, the students need the arts, first of all, to motivate them to come to school. Uh, but also to have some joy in their school day, uh, some opportunities to do things that, that don't diminish them and don't uh, label them and rank them and rate them, uh, but rather give them an opportunity for expression. Uh, but I'm very leery of the argument uh, that the arts have a utilitarian function, uh, such as to raise test scores. Uh, I'm not sure that that would be empirically true, uh, but more importantly, I think it, it, in, in some peculiar sense, you buy into the assumptions of the people who want to test everything all the time, if you say the function of the arts is to raise test scores, that's not the function of the arts. And, and you, I think it's a mistake to uh, take what's most important about the arts and to, and to subjugate it to the purposes of, the, uh, of, of those who are test crazed and, and crazed, uh, obsessed with data. Uh, you, c you can't let their assumptions uh, govern uh, the rationale for the arts, which is first and most importantly about expressing and developing one's humanity. What's happening today in, in our schools is that uh, because of the testing regime, uh, there is a tremendous um, demand for conformity. There's a tremendous demand for compliance and obedience. And uh, the most successful student in, in the current regime will be the one who gets the right answer. <clears throat> what we should be seeking, on the other hand, is the student who asks questions and the student who looks at the questions that have been posed and, and can say, this isn't even the right question. I can't answer this question because it's not the right question. Uh, the answers are wrong and the question's wrong. So through the arts, it's possible to encourage, uh, in fact, to prioritize divergent thinking. And many educators will talk about the value of critical thinking, but there's a very different kind of thinking that I think is important, and that's divergent thinking, to think differently, uh, to see things that other people don't see. That's to me, is the most crucial element uh, that's needed for the future. And that can be certainly a great strength, and is a great strength of arts education, is, is that students are not asked to uh, fill in a blank. Uh, they're not given a preset question with preset answers. Uh, rather, they're invited to create. And the experience of creativity, you can't be creative unless you have the opportunity to be creative. And so I, I think that in, in this sense, the arts may be the one place in the curriculum uh, where divergent thinking is encouraged and prioritized. And this kind of thinking, divergent thinking, may be, in fact, what is most needed in the next, in this century, uh, and, and it is being sacrificed every day in the testing regime.
Under the current circumstances of uh, first No Child Left Behind, and now it's race to the top, and with more and more states adopting um, legislation saying that teachers will be judged by their students' test scores, it will be harder and harder for uh, classrooms to prioritize divergent thinking because if the children, if the students think too differently, they will fail the test. Many, I've seen many, many tests. I, I spent seven years on the National Assessment Governing Board overseeing the NAEP testing, the National Federal Testing Program. And uh, we reviewed all the questions and uh, more, more times than I would like to recall, we had to say this is not a good question. Uh, this should go back. Uh, I think that people assume that standardized tests are somehow a scientific instrument. They're not. Uh, they're errors in the scoring, they're errors in the writing. And to me, the, the very, in, in this case, the medium of a standardized test question is itself a, almost a kind of oppression. It's an oppression of, of thinking. It's forcing thinking into a narrow channel. And uh, the best kind of student thinking would be the student that picks the question apart and says why it could be asked in a different way and why it's the wrong question and why it diverts us from what matters most. Uh, but that's not what we're asking students to do. We're just asking them to obey and conform. So I think the argument for the arts has to be um, against the grain. And it's very tough to do in this environment because against the grain today uh, means that you are taking on both political parties, the federal government, most of the state governments, and a mindset that is completely enveloped uh, educational thinking uh, that, that is actually very narrow and very utilitarian and anti-aesthetic and, and anti-intellectual as well. So that's asking a lot of arts educators. But I think that I believe in arts educators because it's in their nature to, to be different. Uh, and it's in their nature to encourage different thinking. So I think that uh, even under the oppressive conditions that exist today in education, arts ed educators if will see in it the opportunity to be the rebels that are most appreciated in the arts world. Uh, the arts world doesn't like uh, people who just check off boxes and get rewards for being obedient conformist. It likes rebels. <laughs>